Hello, I'm Randy Swallow. Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. For the next half hour, we'll talk county issues and District E issues with a man who represents the area, your Commissioner, Tick Sagerblum. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. How are you today? Fantastic. Excellent. Beautiful morning. Commissioner, thanks again for joining us. Here we are, we're a week before the official opening of the casinos down here on the Strip. What, and something I read in the national news yesterday was, put simply, Vegas will be back in June, but it won't look like the destination we know and love. What do you think about that statement? Well, uh, it's true to start with because they're going to start in phases. But uh, the reason I wanted to have this interview today and, and down here on the Strip is I think this, this offers a great opportunity for all of us to think about who we are as Las Vegans, uh, where we've been, where we're going. Uh, the Strip is obviously the center of the whole county. It's our economy. But uh, coming down here and seeing how eerie it is with nobody on it, but also seeing the opportunity. So let's take this opportunity to, to think about what we want to become, where we're going to go, um, thank God for we got here. Thank God we're still alive. Uh, we've been through hell, but Las Vegas is very resilient. So um, it's just a great time to, to really think about where we're going to be and, and what we want to become. What's going to be our new normal with the masks and things like that? Obviously, whether visitors do it, I guess that's up to individual places, but places such as Caesars and all these giants along here, different protocols, different procedures will take place certainly for their employees. I think start with hopefully everyone will wear a mask. I think it, we've learned that that is really the, the best way to go. Um, but we're also just still in the, in the learning process, both as far as the disease itself and then also how we deal with it. So we'll, 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 we'll evolve as Las Vegas always does. But um, to start with, let's just make be really safe. I, I'm still in the health district, so we're working on contact tracing, we're working on testing. So if, if somebody does post test positive, we're able to trace them down, see everybody they've met, and basically squash the thing before it gets too big, if it does get too big. But it's a learning process. But what I'm more worried about is, is Vegas ultimately, wherever we go, uh, is there something we can do to the strip to change the dynamics of it? You know, truthfully, it's so quiet here, there's a lot, of, lot to be said about that as far as maybe we could take cars off the Strip or at least maybe one day a week take the cars off the Strip. Uh, we have Resorts World coming in down here on the north end of the Strip. That's going to really change the dynamics. We have the Tesla um, you know, tunnel and how that's going to affect everything. So there's going to be lots of things happening in the next couple of years, very exciting. And so let's focus on our future and how, that, how we evolve. And, but also just use this time to really think about you know, what we've been through, where we are, and then where we're gonna be five, 10, 20, and 50 years. Do you think visitors are ready to come back here? Let's take a place like Caesars, for example. They probably have about eight or so properties. They're opening up two of their hotels to begin with and the link as an attraction. So they're anticipating maybe 25% of their visitors. Are, are people ready to flock back to the Strip? Yeah, truthfully, I think they are. I mean, that, the biggest problem is gonna be airplanes, Californians, are, I'm sure, will be flocking here, but uh, we'll just have to see. The hotels have, you know, the great thing about reservations is you have a good feel for what people are thinking. So once they open up and they can see how the reservations are going, they'll have a better idea. But when you look at the, the pictures on TV of people on the East Coast, on the beaches and things, I think it's pretty clear people want to get out. I want to get out. You know, it's, it's, we are, even as much as we love Zoom meetings and, and WebEx and all that stuff, people are very social. And that's what Vegas is. Vegas is someplace where you come here uh, with your friends or just to meet people you don't know, but just to socialize, relax, have a good time. And, and so I think ultimately that's what people in the, in the world need is, is Las Vegas, frankly. We need to just come here and just say, I'm alive, I've survived, and let's just celebrate uh, how in would a you, safe way. I understand completely. How would you rate, we're here today as of actually phase two, which locally to us means that bars are open with a little bit more, a uh, little more freedom and gyms and other uh, places like that. But how would, you, how would you suggest or how would you rate how Governor Sisolak's plan has been so far to open up our community in, in staggered phases? Well, I give him all the credit in the world. First, for shutting things down. I mean, to shut the strip down in, in our major economy, that is a huge decision on his part. And he made it quick, he made it early, and I think that's what really saved Nevada. If you look at our numbers, we started to go up, and then bam, it, it slowed down right then, and then it's, it's gradually just gone down to, to very minimal. So it, it's really up to him. Uh, and then he realizes that it's really going to be business that dictates how it opens up. So open up in phases, 
and let business kind of sense what's going on. But also, we have a really strong monitoring program, so if things start to light up, um, you know, we can shut things down again. We're, 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 we're very sophisticated in that. And the great thing is, we're such a concentrated state. You know, 70% of the population lives right here in this little townie. So uh, we can very quickly open up or shut down, uh, depending on what happens, but hopefully nothing will happen. And how about large scale events here? This, this street is the site of a couple hundred thousand people on New Year's Eve. It's, there's thousands of people here on a marathon day, for example. Are we ready to get back to large scale events like that, Commissioner? Not yet. That, and that, that is really our, one of our problems because we were really going that direction with the new stadium, with the concerts and everything. We were really focusing on entertainment and putting large numbers of people into small areas. So I, I think that's going to be a, a real challenge for us, and that's going to take some time, and maybe not even until next year. But the reality is eventually it's going to happen, and we are, again, primed for it. But again, look at this trip. They say that being outdoors is the best way to, to congregate. So we have this whole strip. If we shut it down and, and people could mill around here, you could have social distance and still have 100,000 people. So there's lots of opportunities we can do, and, and I know the hotels are looking at it, but I just want to encourage everybody to think how can we take advantage of this opportunity to rethink how the strip operates. And I give a lot of credit to Chris June Kiliani, my predecessor, because she talked for years about trying to shut down the strip. It just, to me, it just, it's so perfect to be able to walk back and forth um, across the strip and, and get the cars and the pollution off. Um, I think it's worth looking at. I think one missed opportunity, well, one definite missed opportunity was supposed to occur a month or so ago was the NFL draft just at our neighbors here at uh, mostly over on, on Flamingo here in, in front of Bellagio. And much of the activities, as you said, were going to take outside on their water feature and across there and, and closing off streets at that point. The NFL is coming back in two years to bring that massive project, the NFL draft here in 2022. So that's a good sign that a behemoth like the National Football League is saying, hey, we're still ready to do business in Las Vegas. Absolutely. And also, just when you look at what they were talking about, they were talking about utilizing the Strip as a place where people congregated and walked around. They, we were going to shut down the Strip from from uh, Twain there uh, all the way down past Bellagio. So if we could do it for the Strap, we could certainly do it, again, maybe just do one day a week or just do one day and see how it works out. But but let's think outside the box and and if, if we can become something different, let's let's think about it. We'd see you on a bike. We'd see you leading <laughs> leading the way there, would we, Commissioner? Well, uh, next year, my goal is to run, not next year, but I think it's in November when we have the marathon. Hopefully, we'll have it again. But my goal is to do the half marathon, which also you'll see me running up and down the strip. All right. Or all right. at least see me laying on my back in the middle of the strip. Commissioner, you did touch on the stadium and, uh, and on a more, perhaps a more uh, immediate basis, possibly some uh, NHL hockey games down at T-Mobile, but of course the NFL Raiders and UNLV Rebels will be filling up Allegiant Stadium here soon. How do you think that's going to play out this fall? As I see it right now, I'm not sure they're going to be able to have any fans in those in those buildings. Um, so the games will take place, they'll be on TV, but I don't know they're going to be able to have many people in there. But we'll, we'll have to see. It's, it's, it's a work in progress. But, but the NFL, as you said, they're going to come back in two years in the draft. They virtually promised us that they would bring the Super Bowl here in th four or five years. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that's going to be a huge component of, of who we are. Uh, sports betting is a huge thing that we, we pioneered and we're taking advantage of. All the things, if you look at the trends around the world, we have been the leaders and we're poised to really take that to the next level. The question is what the next level is going to be. And I think it's, it's, it's the same thing but outside and just you know my big thing is marijuana why couldn't we have uh, areas out here on the strip where people can congregate and smoke marijuana you can't do it in the casinos but if it's legal why not allow it to have have certain circle places where because the smoke goes up in the air um, so things like that um, let's think what we can do to encourage people to come here have a good time and still be healthy Commissioner, you touched on conventions. Obviously, the convention center was still operating. There's a major uh, expansion going on there that they expect to hope to get open for one of our largest conventions next January. CES, of course, is what I'm talking about. What are your thoughts on that? That's when I pray we're able to, to, to bring back in full uh, by then. And that, that, that's kind of the timetable I'm looking at. Um, we'll just have to see, but it's, it, it's a huge convention. Uh, the huge expansion that they did there, they, and again, they have the Tesla cars going underground, which in itself is going to be a, a real tourist attraction. And they're now looking at, at going from there out into the strip to some of the hotels and maybe someday right under the strip right here. 
So to me, that is so much fun um, to, to be the place where innovation occurs. And then let's take that to the next level and have our city the most electric city in the country. Why couldn't we be have electric uh, charging stations everywhere, encourage electricity, uh, electric cars, electric buses, just get rid of all that noise, that pollution. I've seen the air quality so much better since we shut down. It's going to be really sad when we go back to where we're our new no our normal with the air quality. So there's just lots of things we can do, and let's 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 again use government to to work with the private industry to plan for the future and then start to put it in place because we have that luxury now uh, having this pause to now move forward and maybe skip a whole generation of what we were going to be and, and become the, the future which is always what we've been you know we take advantage of, of a crisis and this is the time you see a lot of positives here obviously yes commissioner the north end of the strip is part of district e there's a lot of construction going on there that's been one sector actually of our economy that has actually increased in the last year or so we've been able to we've had so many major projects including a couple in in your district we'll get to here in a second but construction has kind of helped keep our economy alive a little bit let's talk about resorts world resorts world is really going to be the new big feature on the strip um, very exciting what they're doing they're, they're coming in top notch it's going to be a new kind of environment so it really is it's what we've always done is we've always taken advantage of things and then moved forward to the next level I think that is going to be the next level which again is the north part of the strip um, but here's one thing I'm concerned about right now we have the stadium lots of, of building trades jobs we have the conventions there lots of building trades jobs we had the sphere behind the Venetian lots of building trades jobs all those are going to end within the next year so then what are we going to do with all those building trades people? I think we need, as government, need to start looking to public works projects where we can employ those people, either building schools or I want to build a new courthouse downtown, uh, art museum, whatever. But let's start to think right now because those things take a while to get going. But we have a great bonding capacity in the county. So we can spend, if we could spend $750 million on the stadium, we could spend a couple of billion on other projects. We could, as I talked about, building a, a subway with a musk uh, subway under the strip let's do that this, let's just do some things but let's not this is where government can play a role and i, I want to have all, everybody involved in this but at the end of the day it's the county commission that the, plays that role so let's do it one of the prior you you talked about public works projects again another one that maybe has been one slight uh, silver lining in this pandemic has been a major project that is going uh, a major roadway and waterworks improvement project the entire length of the strip and for the last couple months at least at your end of the strip they've been able to work 24 7 quite a bit on on some of these things so that is actually might accelerate this project absolutely and and the, even though the strip's going to open it's going to open slowly so now let's take advantage of that timetable and try to push it forward and i know we're working with with the water district and, and with our public works department to do that because you know take advantage of things when you have them but, but it is a major thing. We, the water system under the strip is so old that we needed to replace it. So it, it's a critical infrastructure project. Again, employing lots of jobs, um, and let's do it. But things like that, let's, let's, let's push forward and let's think of through and work with the building trades to make sure that we have good, well-paying jobs. Um, and then, as I said, build things like schools that we know we're, our classrooms are, too, are overcrowded. There's lots of things we can do. Commissioner, you talked on employment, getting people employed again. I read recently where we've actually hit 33% of unemployment here in Las Vegas. Of course, in a week or so when places like this are open, those numbers will come back. But how do we get people back to work and what is Clark County's role in, in that? Well, first, we're going to have um, you know, many millions of dollars available to help businesses who did go slow down or stop, um, come back, uh, just basic things like pe paying for their PPE, uh, giving them direct grants to help pay things for small business, but it, it's going to be a work in progress, uh, helping them work with their landlords to make sure that they don't get defaulted. Uh, but the, So we're going to do a lot of things to help business, but I also want to make sure we help the regular people because they're obviously hurting. Um, and so our social services are going to have to be out there full blast. Hopefully Congress will give us some more money. But this is going to be something where we pull together. We just right today we're looking at what's going on in Minneapolis around the country. We need to make sure that our community understands that we're all in this together. This is not something where it's us against them, one side of the town against the other side of the town. This is this is something we all have been through 
and we're going to make sure that no one falls through the cracks. If you have a problem, you can reach out with your mortgage, with your rent, uh, food assistance, your schools. We need to make sure that going back to school in the fall, everybody has access to the internet, every kid has a computer if, I, if we're going to have to do some type of, of computerized education. So we all have to work together and that's another thing about the strip is that strip has always been available and willing to help everybody because they appreciate the fact that the we can turn help them whatever they need we're there for them now we need to make sure they're there for us and small business you touched on that that grants and things will be available at some point or tell me what what some of the plans are at the county level uh, well as i said one thing we're going to do for small businesses they'll be able to submit their receipts for ppe they've purchased and we'll be able to reimburse them i'm not sure at the level there we'll be able to give some grants um, just direct grants to, to small businesses to help them pay for things we'll also have grants for for um, rent assistance for small business to, to work with the landlords who they, they may have missed a payment for a couple of months. We'll step in there and hopefully negotiate with the landlord and say, look, if we'll help pay for those rents, don't turn around and default these people. These, these small business has really been the, 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 the one that has suffered the most here. They haven't been able to get a lot of the SBA loans and things like that. So now's the time uh, for us to step in and we're gonna work with them to do that. So, so if you're a small business person, please look out for us reach out we're going to mail if you have a business license in the county we're going to try to help you but you need to be alert and and pay attention and, and reach out to us when you when we have these grants available let's just talk a little bit about clark county in general commissioner that obviously now the uh, clark county government center is open we're retooling some of our community centers and uh swimming pools daycares uh um, some of the day camps and things like that are getting ready people are going to be using these things probably even in bigger numbers than they were at other times I hate to say it, but the truth is, if you've been stuck with your family, your kids are going crazy, you're going crazy, so our uh, recreation centers are, are so important because that's going to be a relief valve for the, both the children and for the parents. So hopefully people will take advantage of those situations, and we're, I'm working right now for some of those those camps require uh, tuition. Hopefully we'll have uh, grants for those for parents that can't afford to pay for it. Because it, it, again, it shouldn't be something if you have the money, you, your kids can go to camp, but if you don't, you can't go to camp. So we'll work on that. And we'll also have food assistance, we'll have lunches. We'll have lots of things available. So parents, uh, feel free to reach out to us, pay attention to what's out there, um, and take advantage because we have great recreational facilities. We also have great parks, the wetlands parks, other parks. You know, it's going to be the summertime, but you can go out early morning or after dusk. Um, but get outside. I know if you're like me, you feel so cooped up, you're going crazy. Now's the time to unwind, get out there, get the, work off some steam. Commissioner, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you a couple questions on uh, on COVID testing. Uh, you're, of course, a member of the Southern Nevada Health District, and I know you ha had recent meetings. And well, let's talk, I guess, first of all, with uh, one of the great community partnerships between UMC, Clark County, and first with uh, Boyd Gaming at the Orleans, and now at UNLV. There's free COVID testing for anyone, whether, whether they have symptoms or not. That's right. We have available free. The question is getting it around, make sure it's, it's everywhere in the valley. So um, a lot of Walmarts are having facilities. Those are free. Uh, I'm working on getting facilities in East Las Vegas. Um, but, but if you want to be tested, you can be tested for free. You don't have to show a citizenship, whatever it is. It's, it's really critical, especially if you have symptoms. But otherwise, just just get a test. That's, 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 that's something we're offering and we're going to keep working on it. And then if for some reason somebody in your know tests positive or you may be contacted and say, you know, you were in contact with somebody and they tested positive, we want you to come down and be tested, please do that. It's so critical that we, once we know where it is, we can start to trace it back, track it down, make sure everybody is isolated and contained. And if we do that, this thing will literally be under control. And that's all we can do until we get a vaccine is keep it under control. But again, we're a small town, we're committed to this process, but we need the, the citizens of Las Vegas to participate. What are the other messages, main messages coming from our medical and epidemiologist experts from the uh, from the health district, Commissioner? Uh, primarily, wear a mask. If you're out there, wear a mask. Um, you know, just and, and socially distance. Make sure you're six feet apart. Anytime you can be six feet apart, um, and then the rest of it's going to be up to the business to make sure that that people don't congregate inside the businesses or inside bars and things like that. But. In my experience, everyone's pretty pretty afraid of this, so they're they're watching out for their own health. They know this is not just them; it's their family, it's their their coworkers. Um, so it's going to be a slow rollout, but um, 
we don't want to see scenes like we've seen on TV where people are, you know, uh, you know, stacked together in pools of things. We're not going to see that in Las Vegas. Commissioner, obviously you're very bullish on this town. You've lived here much, if not all of your I, life. I was it, born here 72 years ago. So you would obviously are very bullish on what's going on here. You would have no hesitation in uh, recommending a family member or a visitor to come back here at some point. No, absolutely. Um, you know, we are very resilient. We're very innovative. And again, we, we always look to the next level. So when the rest of the country is here, we're already looking down the road. And that's what I'm saying to people is, let, we've just been through a couple of months of hell, but also a time to reflect. Um, so let's use this advantage to think about where we want to be and how we can take advantage of this opportunity to, to start to prepare for that. Whether it's making sure we have internet everywhere, high-speed internet everywhere, we'd have electric city, uh, we take the cars off the strip, we have a subway under the strip, whatever it is, let's think through it and make sure that everybody in Las Vegas benefits, not just a few people. But it's, I, I, I know that we'll come back bigger and stronger than before. There's going to be some tough months, but um, this is Las Vegas, and we all know that together we can do anything. Uh, the, the, when you look at what the hells we've been through, um, in some ways this is probably easier than a lot of those things. But anyway, just if you're out there, just think about what you want Las Vegas to be. Let's start talking about it collectively, and then we'll come up with a plan, and, and as we come out of this, we'll be bigger and stronger and, and more futuristic than ever. And, the, and for the next few months, the most impressing uh, issues on the, on the plate for you and your staff? Uh, just make sure that things roll out safely. We really monitor uh, any kind of eruption so that if anything happens, we're on top of it. We, we capture it, we contain it, and then we move forward. And just, it's going to be in stages. The governor has led the way. Uh, now it's really going to be up to the county commission to take his lead and, and make sure that the strip evolves the way it needs to evolve, but I'm confident we can do it. These hotels don't want to do anything that's going to hurt, hurt their reputation, uh, the billions of dollars invested here, so let's just work together. The other thing is make sure that we understand that it's the workers that are being exposed. So all the people that work at these places, all these hotels, all these union workers, let's make sure and protect them and also thank them every day for risking their lives because they're the ones to earn a living have to be out there dealing with the public. So it's, it's very critical. Well put. Well, let's just do an air handshake here, and thank you as always, Commissioner. We'll let you get back to work. And I love your mask. Thank you, Commissioner. That wraps up this edition of In Your Neighborhood. Thanks to our good friends at Caesars Entertainment for hosting us here at the legendary Caesars Palace, and to Commissioner Tick Sagerbloom for taking time to tell us about the area he calls home and represents as your elected official in District D. If you have any questions about this show or ideas for upcoming segments in your neighborhood, call me. I'm at 702-455-6357 or send off an email to rsw at clarkcountynb.gov. Thanks for tuning in to Clark County Television. On behalf of our production staff, I'm Randy Swallow. We'll see you again next time in your neighborhood.